Hey guys, welcome back. It's Garden Angel or Garden Angel with Jetty Buffer, and I'm here with Secrets Untold by Legend X Games. Um, I already love the music, and uh, I like the character, the way the characters look. Um, but I already played for a few, and uh, I already like it. So I, I just, it's uh, usually when I start playing a little bit, I. Uh, the only reason why I do that is so I, you know, get a feel of the game, you know, check to make sure it's not too gruesome or mature or whatever. Okay. Let's go. Eighteen years ago, a newborn baby girl was left on the doorstep of Castle Vestia. Turn that down, please. Long one. Gee. How rude. There was nothing notable about her presence except for the unnerving fact that her origin was unknown. Hold on. But yeah, these are my other saves because I couldn't figure out how the heck to delete saves. So I'm gonna be saving on here. Options for me turn down the music a little bit. How had she found her way to the kingdom, and what clan did she belong to? With not even a single note left with... Le no, no, not with... Uh, my tongue needs to be fired. With not even a single... Single note left... <clears throat> a single note left in the baby's basket, the girl's lineage was untraceable. By the way, be right back. Okay, back. The young queen begged her husband to allow the child to live within the castle's walls. King Rory had a reputation to uphold. He couldn't simply open his throne, or open his room, home, and raise the child as his, as his own blood. Yet at the same time, his morality and devout faith would not allow him to leave a child hungry and alone. A compromise was made. If the little girl were to remain in his palace, she would have to work for her spot. The baby was placed in the servants' quarters, where she was raised to cook, clean, and serve the king. Despite what it may have seemed like, she was loved and cared for as with many other children in kingdom work. The other servants were her family. Balder, the young prince, was her friend. She hadn't needed she hadn't needed any more than that. Even though she lived blissfully ignorant in the castle, the young girl was anything but proper. Thus, her connection to the royal family was hidden away until Baldur had proposed. Then her life changed drastically. What the heck are you doing? Oh, Sir Baldur, I apologize for being in your way. The lump in my throat grew as I heard his velvety smooth laugh. How could I be so irresponsible? I must have looked like a total klutz to Baldur. Definitely not queen material. Callista. He threw his arms around me to steady me. No need to be so formal. The nobles aren't around. I let out a sigh of relief and hugged my best friend tightly. Good. I don't know how much longer I can be so formal. I just want to put on some pants and run around in the forest a bit. <laughs> That's a terrible idea, darling. How are you supposed to help me rule Vestis if you're soaked in mud? Dread washed over me. Dread washed over me. 
Ooh, no, that wasn't what I wanted to think about at all. I'd much prefer cheering on Baldur from the sidelines. The fate of thousands would be in my hands, and that thought alone terrifies me. please, can we talk about something else? <laughs> I'm only joking. In fact, I'd like to join you in your mud bath, if I may, once all the ceremonies are over. I'm going to be the Queen of Vestas, and you're totally okay with me rolling around in the mud. I knew the answer, but I wanted to hear it in his comforting voice. Baldur never questioned me. It didn't matter that I had no title to cling to. Sure, in a few days I'd be queen, but it wouldn't be like anything I had already experienced with Baldur. He was the most courageous man I knew. That was why he wouldn't take no for an answer when he told his father that he wanted to marry I me. I like that about you. Your undying thirst for adventure excites me. You can never sit still, and I have this desire to watch you frolic around just to see the trouble that you get yourself into. I punched his arm playfully. Thank you. I mean it. I know, darling. I love you. He leaned over and kissed my forehead. It was enough to send a shiver down my spine. In just a few days, I'd be his one and only officially. No matter what I feared, he'd always be by my side. Do you hear that? It might be the palace guards. We should straighten ourselves out a bit. He reached over and dusted the bodice of the long gown while I straightened. I should probably go find Loretta. She wanted to fit me for a few gowns. She does realize the ceremony is in just a few days, yes? A lot of the small laugh and nodded. Well, this is your fault. I would have been fine with any regular dress. You had to buy several of them. For my queen, I do absolutely anything. Kiss my forehead once more. I should be going to fill out more paperwork. This time it's palace inventory. What a drag. Do you know how much I have to do just to get his approval for our marriage? I said I'd help. King Rory was a good man if you look past his intense support for the obligation of tradition. He loved his son immensely, but his duty to his kingdom had always come first. As the only surviving son of a Parisi name, Baldur would inherit the throne. Therefore, his wife would have to be, some, be someone of great influence. I did not fit that criteria. I was just a charity baby that the king allowed to be raised in his castle. Of course, Baldur saw differently, but it didn't change the whispers around town. Having me marry Baldur would not only be a hit to the family name, but an act of royal stupidity. Marrying for love when there's were marrying for love when there were so many different so many beautiful duchesses out there that could open trade routes all across Arya? Unheard of, pitiful even. Yet Baldur stood firm and King Rory realized that his son was worth more than a, than a stupid name. Well, at least that was what I was pretending. Baldur was the only one in the family that could take the throne. He shared Rory's blood. When Baldur threatened to leave the kingdom, there wasn't much of a choice for the king. The paperwork was just a little something extra to keep Baldur in line. No need to worry, darling. Enjoy your last few days as a regular person. The hard work comes later. Meet me in the garden tonight. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? I nodded curtly. Same time as usual. Be right back. sister's playing a horror game. Well, not really a horror game. She's playing Thief, but there's, well, she's in an asylum in the game. So, lots of creepy stuff are happening. So she's, like, screaming and stuff. Baldur and I met in the garden every single night since we were old enough to roam the castle without a maidservant. As we got older, I remained carefree, but Baldur 
He had more important things to worry about. He had archery lessons, dinners to attend, and diplomats to meet. But even with all the stress of his impending kingship, he found time for me in the garden. With a short nod and a wave, he, he left the room. There wasn't much else I could do, so I decided to go to my dressing room to see Loretta. If you're really going to be queen in a few days, you're going to have to work on being more prompt. My ears were met with a discordant voice. Loretta, as whiny as usual. Sorry, I was caught up doing something. Do you have the last dress choices so I can finally move on with my life? No need to be so snarky. I have three more dresses for you to try on. Now get a move on, we don't have all yet. I groaned. Loretta, please. I'm fine with any dress you choose for me. You know I hate all the attention and fuss. Loretta let out a drawn-out laugh. <laughs> You'd better get used to it, hun. You'll be the queen of bestest very soon, and attention is all you'll have. <sighs> Lovely. That's how I would feel. I collapsed onto the chair as Loretta scrambled to pick out a dress for me to try on. Minutes ticked away. Soon the minutes turned into hours. Did I have to have my hair and makeup done for each dress I tried on? Well, what do you think? I simply shrugged and stood up. I was exhausted. I was exhausted and I needed to take a rest before I met up with Baldur. I like them all. It's your choice. Oh no, Callista! Get back here and make up your mind! She shouted after me, but I was already halfway out the door. I sent her a quick wave before rushing out of the room. Loretta wouldn't allow me to look horrible in front of all the noble families of Vestas. I knew I had nothing to worry about. I collapsed onto the sofa in my room. It was so nice to finally be off, my, off of my feet. Who knew that being royalty was so much work? The funny thing is that I had, was just given this room after Baldur announced our engagement. Save. Alright. I'm going to end the episode here. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, share, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!